Hey guys, I'm Jack Barnwell, landscape architect, landscape contractor, proud papa, and the creator of Aquapots by Proven Winners. Today I wanted to show you through a little bit about what an aquapot is, how they work and everything. I'm down here in southwest Florida with my C3 Gardens crew and we've got a whole bunch of pots to plant up here this morning and so I thought I'd slow down, show you through one of them, plant it up with you live and in, there, in, in doing so I can explain how they work and everything like that so it'll be a lot of fun. This particular pot I'm going to plant up with you is available nationwide, available online. It's one of my personal favorites. It's a beautiful, beautiful pot. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's dive in. Like I said, I'm out here at my shop at C3 Gardens. I've got a whole nursery of beautiful, beautiful plant material to work with. We're down here in Southwest Florida where I get to play around with a lot of really cool tropicals and things. A lot of plants that many of you might recognize as house plants. And, and they certainly are in many, many parts of the world. But down here we can get away with using them outside. And, uh, and so it's pretty fun. This particular beauty right here is our quilted pattern. This is a quilted white aquapot. Um, and this beautiful, beautiful bowl shape is gonna be planted up. I've got six of these to plant up for the shade uh, going to this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, residence here in Naples, Florida. And so I thought I'd plant this one up with you guys, show you what I'm thinking for the planting and stuff, but also take you through how an aquapot works, the inner workings of it, and what makes it self-watering, what makes them so incredibly great. Uh, you know, when I first started this company, we were doing everything with drip irrigation and, uh, and planting a lot of pots. I had this dream of having a company down here just doing pots and, uh, and trying to rely on drip irrigation was, you know, was a complete failure. We learned that fortunately very quickly that the sun and the salt and there was just too many variables. So we developed this self-watering system and integrated and retrofitted beautiful, beautiful ceramic pots. Um, long story short, we then partnered up with Michael Carr, Michael Carr Designs, to design and integrate our aquapot system right into the pottery at the factory level in Vietnam. So these all come as self-watering planters, you know, right right off the bat. Um, and what makes them so unique is several factors. So every aquapot comes with this insert system and I'll show you through what makes that so special and what, what that's all about in a second here. But right, right away I wanted to show you this pot. You'll notice there's no hole in the bottom. No drainage hole in the bottom whatsoever. The drainage is way up here, this tiny little indiscreet hole in the back of the pot. And that hole is right underneath this rim. This rim right here is really, really important because that's what separates the soil and the water uh, reservoirs. This disc, soil tube, and fill tube are the three like most important elements and really integral in making this pot into an aqua pot. So the disc is what separates the soil and the water. And this column right here is full of soil going all the way down to the bottom of the pot. It's got all these threads on here so that we have all this adjustability in the height of the soil tube. The reason we want adjustability is that these are all handmade pieces, beautiful pottery pieces and not every single one of them is exactly the same. So being able to adjust that so it fits nice and snug in the pot, sits nice and tight on the bottom of the pot, makes for a really nice seal. Then this fill tube goes into this hole just like that, and this beauty is ready to go. So it's extremely simple to set up. They're super heavy duty commercial grade planters. You know, you can't, 
really destruct or break an aquapot. These elements are made to withstand year after year of being cleaned out, rinsed off, replanted uh, time and time again. So we take, this is the potting soil that we use, this beautiful Proven Winners potting soil. And very important step in filling up that soil tube is making sure that that column is packed nice and tight. You wanna make sure there's no big air gaps or anything because that soil column going all the way down into that water reservoir is your wick. This soil works really, really well in that it wicks up moisture while maintaining air porosity. So I'll kind of break that up as I go. Um, so conveniently, one full bag of potting soil perfectly fills up these pots. I might have a little bit of soil extra here, but the way that I plant, I just kind of make a big mess and clean it up later, so it really doesn't matter. I'll also sprinkle some of this continuous release, slow release plant food all over the soil. I'll put about two tablespoons all over the soil and two tablespoons right in the tank as well. That will allow for, when, when I fill up the reservoir with water, that fertilizer will actually slowly release underwater, making that water in the reservoir slightly fertilizer infused, wicking up into the soil and the plants are just gonna absolutely go crazy. All right, so like I said, I've got to plant up a bunch of these this morning for a client and thought it'd be fun to walk you guys through what I'm thinking and what I'm dreaming up for this shade part sun planter. We've got six of them to do for this lanai setting and they're all gonna be these beautiful white pots. Uh, I'm gonna plant this up kind of eclectically and wildly for the real tropical vibe. I'm gonna first start with this Dracaena lemon lime. And these guys, I know that they're propagated from cuttings and I'm really just after those roots so I can shake off a lot of that real barky soil there and just tuck this guy right in, right back here and it's gonna be much happier in our soil anyway. That guy, I'm also gonna use a tough, tough plant, mother-in-law's tongue as many of you know it as, uh, but this guy will give us a lot of height and structure in toward the back of the pot here and um, I know it's gonna do really, really well in the shade. So that guy's fun. Got some cool greens going so far. For wild, funky texture, I'm gonna use this papyrus grass. This is baby tut. Really cool grass. And in the shade, it doesn't get too crazy. So I can have that guy right in the center and it's just gonna send off these kind of funky firework like grass panicles there. Uh, Guzzo, Guzmania, Bromeliad, you can tuck him in right there. Kind of shooting off the side. This other Bromeliad, she was grabbing onto the pot a little bit there, but we happy to go into this planter. And I kind of plant them on an angle a little bit, just spilling out can sort of be half planted really. Peacock Calathea, this little stunner right here, right up front next to that bromeliad. Beautiful contrast there, funky foliage. I'm gonna get some of this wild sedum. This is a really fun plant. I'm just knocking off a little bit of extra soil. This is a very, very tough plant. And I know that I can take a little bit of this soil out, tuck him in right there. And in the shade, these sedums kind of reach and spill and a really cool, wild little contrasting color there. And then spilling off this other side, I'm gonna go with this fun little wire vine. Some little vine effect, green fun little Little mouse ear like leaves that are super cute. And that guy is now planted up. 
but planting it is not, you know, this is not finished yet. Even though it looks quite stunning, I do like the way this planter is turning out. For C3 Gardens, this is not completely finished yet. We have two or really three more steps to go to have this thing finished and ready to go out the door for delivery. So to really finish this planting out beautifully, we take living Spanish moss that we order wholesale in bulk. We get this stuff in once a week and this is an epiphyte. It literally is a living plant. Um, it's related to bromeliads. I mean, it's, it's, this is closely related, in fact, to pineapple, believe it or not. Um, kind of fun little fact there. But I like to tuck this Spanish moss in. It makes for a beautiful kind of almost mulch looking, nice little gray ground cover, makes all the plants pop and gives it a real florist sort of finish. Um, and upon initial delivery, it's very clean, very classy. You can just break it apart, you know, you grab that there. The other thing I really like about it is that I keep my soil level just a little bit low in these plantings and then top it up with the Spanish moss. Holds moisture in and things like that, but it also in a rain or somebody heavy you know, waters this with a hose and you're not going to have a lot of soil just spilling out and making a big mess or anything like that. It kind of keeps everything nice and tight and tidy. Okay, so that guy has been mossed. Clean off some of the foliage a little bit. Our next step is leaf shine. We buy this product, Crisal, Crisal Leaf Shine. Um, we buy this uh, by the case and um, we go through it for sure, uh, quite a bit of it. We buy, you know, I think there's 12 bottles in a case. And the reason we use it is it not only makes the plants look absolutely stunning and beautiful for that initial delivery, but it also seals up some of the foliage a little bit from transpiration so they're not releasing and losing so much moisture so that when they're initially planted, they don't go through quite as much shock from me handling them like a brute that I am. And so they look just really, really stunning, all shiny and gorgeous. It looks quite nice. And then I'll take this other product, Barkeeper's Friend. And this works really, really well to buff the pots, get them really nice and clean and ready for delivery. So like I said, I've got five more of these to do. Um, I'm gonna plant them all really, really similar, but a little bit of different funky theme to each one, but pretty much the same color scheme and look to them. We'll get them all installed and then we'll uh, definitely post a picture or uh, do another video of the installation there. So if you guys don't follow us along on Instagram, be sure to do so at Jack Barnwell Design. And I uh, hope you guys all learned a little something something, got a little inspired today, and are having a beautiful, wonderful day wherever you may be. Cheers, have a wonderful day. Later.